All right, well, welcome back to our third edition of the Everyday Black Man. I am so excited um, to talk to a dear friend today. Um, so I'll give, if this is your first time tuning in, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, if you have not seen our previous two episodes, you're missing a treat. But if this is your first one, you will not be disappointed. So at the 5-Minute Career Hack, we really wanted to, I was not necessarily a spin, but we wanted to tell black history in our way. And we've been highlighting um, different people, but we also wanted, um, especially what we do with careers, we talk about debunking myths. And we want to reshape people's opinion around black people because I personally feel like, obviously, it starts with my father, my husband, brother, cousins, friends. I know a lot of dope black men that are doing fantastic things. Um, and we want to create that on our platform to be able to celebrate them. Okay. So with that being said, today, I want to turn it over to Richard. You want to introduce yourself? What's up? Um, Richard Bodu, uh, born and raised in Oklahoma City, currently living in New York City, and I work in advertising, and I'm a good friend of Alicia here. Yes, yes. You know about what, 20 plus years? So. You know, we, you, you know it's on one thing. Here. Yeah, one time, like, either if you tell how long it's been, people think, like, wow, but then when you tell how long it is, it's like, this is amazing, right? Yeah. Being able to it's see been this. A minute, a minute. For sure. And I feel blessed to be able to see just your journey. So let's go ahead and get into it. You ready? Yep, let's go. Okay. Well, you know, we are like smack dab in the middle of Black History Month. So let's talk about that. What does that mean to you? Like, how was it growing up? Like, what are your thoughts about Black History Month? Um, I like it. Uh, obviously, it's the shortest month of the year, so I wish it was longer. But just like you know, people having camp uh, companies or brands, just people kind of make a note that it's it's not just a month. It's it's year round. It's, it's 365. So I like seeing campaigns and messages around that, but just the overall um, month, I, I like it. It gives us a chance to kind of reflect and see kind of what's happened before, see what people have done to get us where we're at right now. It also kind of like we highlight the people currently making waves, and then um, we kind of like give a pathway to like the future of like kind of what, what people can see. It just allows uh, people that look like us to kind of understand the magnitude of kind of the impact we've had on this country and um the stuff that we can do and we're capable of yeah so does anybody come up for you i mean you use some powerful words around impact reflection currently who comes up for you when you think about those words uh, um <clears throat> man that's that's a it's picking one person is gonna well be you can pick many in the aspect of, yeah you can pick, <laughs> okay okay yeah. okay um Man, that's, I mean, I don't want to go like the traditional, like obviously like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, of like they were, they were huge, huge, huge impacts. Um, Barack just being like the first black president. Just honestly, like even kind of for me, like sports figures, because it's like, like them being kind of like, I'm a huge sports fan. So just kind of, <clears throat> seeing what people have done, like Magic Johnson was able to like have a kind of almost a better career post playing than he did while he did while he was playing. Um, you really have to like look at LeBron as like, you have to give him his credit just in the aspect of like, when we were kind of in school coming up, like putting your, like when you had your kind of quote unquote friends around you, it was looked at as like a bad thing. Whereas he put his friends around him, he put them all in positions to like win. And now they're all super successful and succeeding. And it wasn't just like hanger owners or uh, outride or pasta. No, these are my friends. They are capable. They're um, smart and they can run businesses and run organizations as well. Um, see here, just even um, a lot of like the Black um, Lives Matter stuff, like a lot of the protests, like a lot of those were kids like making those um, making those things like D-Ray. A, a lot of those people, just been a ton of people that have like gone out of their way and used their voice to kind of uplift us and, and make a huge, huge impact. So I like literally just having one person, I'm just I'm like literally thinking right now, I'm like, there's not even just one person I can kind of put my, my finger on this like. Because I'm inspired every day by somebody that looks like us, so it's just like, wow, this person did this, this person did that. So, it's 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 a lot of us doing really really amazing things. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think that's what kind of inspired these chats is I've been inspired by things that you've done. Um, also, I've prepared if people ask me, right? Because I'm like, okay, what if they ask me who's uh, yeah. my favorite person? And then I get stumped and what came up first for me was like Wilma Rudolph. To your point, you're like, oh, traditional and running track. She was somebody that was yeah. super dope. But then I have to say because of today, and she is my birthday twin, I have to say like to your point, Kurt, like Rihanna, like you think about mm. just, for the impact she's made where she's from in the career, like what she's done from philanthropy, but you, you know, kind of your point around like even yeah. Magic Johnson, like it's when you're absorbing something, like even I recently looked back at Janet Jackson's, I don't know if you caught that documentary when you're living mm -hmm. through it, you don't realize how amazing you're like, you look nope. back like, wow, that was super dope. So I totally, agree. I got to actually throw Dion. I, I got to throw Dion in there too, just from yeah. the aspect of like, I really looked up to him as a kid and like a lot of not a well yeah a lot of black kids like kind of maybe didn't have like a father figure growing up and a lot of people have like a false confidence there's nothing false about Dion like the confidence that he has and how he is and the stuff he says and the things he does and literally he played when we on the field and backed it up and it kind of gave people looking up to him like oh I can I can puff up my chest and be confident and then just kind of looking at what he's doing now at Jackson State is like, it's really beyond amazing. Like for him to be able to recruit kids he's recruiting, have seasons, the two seasons that he's had, and he's literally said what he was going to do and he's doing it. And then maybe another sports one, because I love sports, it's probably Kobe, just in an aspect. I still haven't mourned his death either. Um, I agree. In the aspect of like the Mamba mentality, like, he really worked hard and the, he was able to kind of have the confidence in himself was because of the work he put in. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't false. It wasn't, it was, it was real because of the work he put in. And so that stuff like that, just kind of people who can like simplify life. Like if I work hard, this is going to happen. Now, granted things have to fall into place, but I would say Kobe and Dion just from a, a confidence aspect of like, doing the work and showing it, showing up, improving it. Yeah, for sure. And I think he, to your point, inspires you to feel like you can achieve what you want to, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody has the same amount of time and everybody has the ability to apply themselves, right? Whatever that may mm -hmm. look like at any point. So yeah, I totally, I mean, that's an excellent point. So let's talk about, um, I know you kind of shortchange yourself, right? But let's get into you. I would love to talk about you. So when you think about through your life, has there been somebody that's been instrumental um, or who comes up, you know, when you think about somebody that's been an, um, an inspiration for you to do what you're doing today? Um, a ton of people. Like, I can, I, I'll, 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 I'll a lot of people, like, a lot of flowers, money, and thank yous uh, just for where I'm at. Uh, even from when I first got into college, like, I didn't, I wasn't initially accepted into the university I wanted to get into. Uh, I asked one of my high school friends, so she was going to OU, she's playing volleyball. She's going to go play volleyball. She was like, hey, call this lady up. She'll, she should be able to help you out. I literally called and maybe a week later I got into o, OU. And so me even getting there was like a start. Um, grad school was the same issue. Um, getting the University of Texas, it was like a bit of an issue. I called um, the administration's office and, and got a meeting set up, literally drove down from Norman to Texas Relays that weekend, got a meeting set up that Friday. And what, 10 days later, I was in, I was in grad, grad school. I was accepted into grad school. Um, even my, my mentor right now, Shantika Seiger, she's probably one of the best copyright or creative directors um, that I've ever been around. And she just wow. would always stay on me, stay on me all the time. And like, I still lean to her and reach out to her for um, assistance and help. So there's been a ton. I've not, I've not done anything on my own. I've, I've never really bought into the, I got it out the mud or I did it all by myself because literally you didn't know you, nobody's done anything by themselves. Like it took two people to make you. It took a doctor and a team of nurses to like deliver you It cut the umbilical cord. It took somebody to kind of take care of you growing up. So like nobody has ever done anything just on their own, so to speak. So you obviously make sure you give credit and show love to the people that have helped you along the way. It's literally I got my entire success. Like I feel like I'm probably responsible for maybe thirty percent of it. It's literally been people helping me along the way and just like it putting me in a position to succeed. So I'm very, very grateful. Awesome. So when you think about 
let's let's kind of maybe reflect on a time because you you know thank you for sharing that of like you know those people that were advocates for you along the way encouragers um hopefully somebody can think about that um because i think a lot of times if things aren't working out for us we can focus on right now and that gets bigger opposed to those great things that have happened so when you reflect back can you think of a time where things did speed up for you and whether that was like a person that was involved in your development or something you were working on um yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Let's see here. With stuff just like where, where I was in a position where I just probably when I first moved to New York a little bit. When I first moved to New York, um, we I had uh, I had gotten laid off because we lost an account, and so I kind of we lost the account to an agency called Translation, and so I was kind of well, let me just go call them. <laughs> so I I called them. I was like, hey, um, we just lost our account to y'all. Um, I would love to come work for y'all. And then maybe it was probably that was probably March. Oh yeah, it actually it was March 26, 2010. And I ended up moving to New York uh November of that year. And just it went through, I was just kind of harassing people, but they believed in me. And so before I knew it, somebody was just like, Hey, you should come up here, just come give it a shot. I met somebody, I literally took a took a chance on myself. I flew to New York in May of that year for um, what's called a portfolio review. So a bunch of creative directors are out kind of like looking at different uh, portfolios and stuff. It's during creative week. I met with a guy named Jeff Weston, who was at RG at the time. And he said my book was like pretty good. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, thanks. I'm like, you think I have what it takes to work here? He's like, yeah, you do. And so he passed my book around. And then um, I want to say maybe two months later, I got a call and they let me work um, remotely, which was odd way back then in 2010. They let me work remotely from July to about September. Wow. And then uh, I got an opportunity to work full time at translation, actually. And then RJ was like, hey, come to New York, but we won't we won't be full time, but you'll get to work on Nike. And so I was like, well, should I take the full time job or should I just do the, the freelance job? And so I took a risk and I did the freelance job. I went and um, went and stayed with a family friend in New York for about six weeks. Uh, took the freelance job, RJ working on Nike, and then kind of if how you how freelance kind of works, like the money's kind of done towards the end of the year. Like so, November, December, kind of the money's done. And so I would say that in November they're like, "Hey, great work, but um, the project's over." So I was like, "Dang, I don't really I probably should have took the full time job." But I got like a lot of great work uh, made out of it, made out of it. So I was super, super happy about that. And so I went back um, to Austin where I was living at the time and kind of um, and we were talking about documentaries, talking about Janet, uh, kind of the Kanye documentary last call, whenever he talks about, can we get that deal? That's kind of call translation back. I was like, hey, um, that job offer still on the table. Yeah. And then literally the, the woman that had uh, the recruiter that had been helping me she was leaving in a week and she was like it is i'll put you put you in motion and she literally set everything in motion and um by february i was full-time living in new york so that's just like how it kind of just sped up because i didn't have anything and i was just like well i, I need a job and so i reached back out and she was super gracious and helped me and then and a lot of these people you don't really keep up with like i've been talking to some of these people in a while like i've like been seeing them in passing maybe on linkedin or whatever but it's just you don't know how much of an impact you can you can make truly make on somebody's life. Like I can literally probably count about fifteen to twenty five people like off the top of my head that have like I been very instrumental in where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. So let me and let me because I'm as I'm listening to you like and I, I guess I'm thinking about how you've been guided to advertising, right? So we can kind of back up mm -hmm. and get to that. But like if you think about if there's a young person whether they're in high school or college right now listening to this. And you think about mm -hmm. the skills you had or what it took for you to make these calls. Like, what would you say that was? Um, Just literally kind of optimism. Like, I'm really, really optimistic. I think anything can happen. And I, you don't know unless you try. Like, you literally don't know unless you try. Like, it's, I'm not, I've never been the type of person. Like, oh, I'm not going to try that. Like, I just try. Like, I, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not afraid to fail, but like, 
when when it's push when push comes to shove like how bad do you really want it and if it's literally like what's what and what's it gonna hurt like do i i call this lady and see like do i make i'm gonna go to texas relays anyway so i might as well set up this meeting with this uh dean of the college and see if i can talk to him um i want to move to new york and i know which agency has the account and i've worked on it like why not send an email and that 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 story even was like I never knew. I didn't know who the guy was. His name was Seth Jacobs. I remember it. I literally, I didn't, and I don't know the email. So I literally, I just, I typed Seth Jacobs, all one word at translation. It didn't work. I then I typed uh, S, I think Seth dot Jacobs, and then that didn't work. And then I typed, I think I might, I might have it out of order, but then I typed S Jacobs at translation and went through, and then he replied back to me. So it's just literally about like how bad you want it. And if you like, just keep trying, like literally you keep, keep on trying, like something will work out like the same, like if people want to like, going back to like a sports, like if you want to play professional sports and Hey, let's say you, not everybody plays professional sports, but like, if you try, you might get really, really close. You might be an amazing coach, an amazing um, mentor. You just, you can get, you can still do what you want to do. And it might not happen exactly how you want it, but, and I'm still kind of striving to kind of be where I want to be in this industry. Like I, I would love to win more awards. Um, I work at a great agency now, but there's still much, much more for me to do. But for people kind of like listening, just effort, literally mm-hmm. just like put in the work and the effort and and don't stop. Like you're going to get a lot more no's and yeses and just don't let those no's deter you. Because I mean, literally like my, me even getting at the college, like, the two colleges I attended, I was told initially, like literally got a rejection letter and didn't let that stop me and still just kept knocking on doors until one was open. Yeah. And same way like- I do whenever um oh, go ahead. I was gonna make a joke. Same way I do whenever like I'm on the on the phone with like American Airlines or somebody and they like they won't give me a credit. I just hang up <laughs> and wait. You go find somebody to say yes. To somebody go say yes somebody's gonna say yes you just gotta like it's gonna take some time but somebody's gonna say yes sooner or later and they're gonna believe in you yeah yeah and then also too once once they do say yes do not let them down do not that's that's the one thing do not let them down because they literally stuck their neck out for you and not even the very least the absolute must thing you do the absolute thing you must do is deliver on your word and do not make them look bad Yeah, no, I think that's key. And there's so many things to unpack because, you know, in the industry that we're in as career coaches with the five minute career hack, you know, it's so much misinformation. Right. And I hear people almost making it like you're a sucker if you follow up with somebody and say thank you or be gracious for an opportunity that didn't turn out the way you wanted it. Like everything that doesn't end how you wanted it doesn't mean it was bad. And that's what I hear you telling the story of just the opportunity to pitch for myself and believe in me what you're looking at as a blessing, which is lining up for other things. And I think people stop so many times before they even get started, you know, and that's what I'm hearing as you're saying, like, it's just kind of falling into or failing into every opportunity that you had um, until it worked out. Right. You just have to be really persistent and you have to, and you have to want it. You literally just have to want it more than you don't want it. And if, and I can't speak for everybody and everybody has a kind of different circumstances that while they may stop short of their goals, but just for me, I just, I, I wanted it really, really bad. I, I did not want to be in Oklahoma, no offense to the place that I was born and raised, but I just had hopes and dreams and I wanted to get out of there. And so I, I wasn't letting anything stop me. Yeah. So some of these people that gave you an opportunity, <clears throat> you mentioned something that um, I want to just dig into a little bit more around not letting them down. So like when you think about these opportunities, can you reflect on a time or maybe a couple where you're like this, you know, like you got this opportunity and you kicked it out of the park. Like, can you think of a chance where you really made whoever wasn't um, a sponsor for you really proud? Um, Probably when I got to Adidas, like I got to Adidas, um, I I, I believe I performed well there. Uh, We got like an award for creativity, me and, two of my coworkers. Uh, so that I feel good about that one. Just got, cause I had to get like, I was late. I had gotten advertising is kind of, it, it's just a business that if you lose an account, then it's a chance you're going to get laid off. So I've been laid off twice in my career, once in 2010, another time in 2017. 
um, we lost the Verizon account. And so I was just was out of work and it was, it was a rough, it was probably maybe it was, I think I, I got laid off. I want to say it was April 20th. I don't even know why I remember that, but April 20th. And I didn't start work again until October uh, 14th at Adidas. So it's maybe six months and some change, but um, just getting that job, like I had to like reach out to people that I hadn't talked to in a while to give me that reference and recommendation letters. And so just like being successful there was like, it felt good just because I know I like didn't let them down. Like they, they stuck their necks out for me and um, I was able to like repay them by, by doing. Awesome. All right. Well, how did you, I mean, can you think of, I mean, cause you are very creative. Um, you have um, definitely, I don't want to say way with words because that doesn't sound like it doesn't give the magnitude <laughs> of the words that you create. But when did you know that this was something that you were really good at? Um, to be honest with you, and it's probably not the most, the, I probably shouldn't say this, but it's just, it's honest, the truth. I don't, I still don't think I'm the best. I still don't think I'm a great writer. Like I still really? I, what do you think it's not there yeah, to I, make yourself great. I think. I don't know. I, I, I have a I have a problem comparing because I'll I'll, okay. I, I'll see something that somebody else writes. I'm like, dang, I wish I said that. But I, I know I'm good. I know okay. I'm good. But it's just like a it's a perfect perf, perfect doesn't exist. But in my mind, there's there's it it does. Like I can get there one day. And also too, just to kind of not let because I don't have any like the big time awards, which I shouldn't let that validate me. But as a competitor, it's like, I want that, but having that doesn't say I'm, it shouldn't say that I'm good or not good. You know what I mean? It, but just internal, internally, uh, I just think I, I know I can be better. I know I can be better. I can, I can edit a little bit better. I can make stuff shorter, punchier. Um, I can kind of, cause a, a lot of it for, I guess for me personally, I can write, but for different clients, you have to kind of like write in their voice. So okay. for Snapchat, I have to write, I have to really kind of understand that voice and their consumer for uh Chobani. I have to really understand that voice and their consumer for a Geico. I have to understand. So I guess it's going between the different voices on where I can kind of improve and being able to do it quickly. Um, but yeah, uh, but just kind of with writing, I would say maybe sixth grade, I took a creative writing or fifth grade, I think I took a creative writing class and um, I liked it. I, I daydream a lot. So I just, a lot of stuff just kind of is always in my head and I could just write it out and, and whether it's crazy or decent, I just, I've kind of known for a while, like maybe around sixth grade that it was something that I enjoy. I, I wouldn't even say enjoyed it. Just, it, it came a little bit easier than most things for me. Yeah. Well, shout Especially out to all math. of I was not good at math. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand that. <laughs> Look, I know I know how to check my account every day, right? And I know how to I know how to yeah, make exactly. this money add up, right? You know the big thing. Yeah. You know enough. <laughs> but no, shout out to like our elementary, you know, that that age group, you know, or like that that fourth, fifth, sixth, you know, to your point, it's just so instrumental. And just shout out to the teachers. Because I to your as you were saying that I recall, you know, just poems and different contests that you're in. And at the time it's just what you're doing, but here you are, you know, at these age and we're like, we can recall it like it was yesterday. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I, I know, I know some of that stuff I wrote was trash, but just my teacher, Mr. Ferguson, he was always encouraging. It's like, Oh, this is good. This, this is amazing. Like, yeah, looking, right. back, like, <laughs> looking back, some of that stuff was probably like trash, like not great, but I, I appreciate the encouragement because it, because he could have, he could have easily like deterred me. He could have easily been like, this isn't good or, or maybe you should do this or whatever. He could have easily like literally changed the trajectory of my life had he not mm -hmm. been encouraging in those moments. So I definitely am appreciative of him. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So let's talk about, I know you, you're, you know, are not giving yourself credit, but I know you sent over a fantastic, um, you know, just samples of your work. So thank you for sharing that with us. It was definitely inspiring um, for us to look at. And we'll share that with the audience as well so they can appreciate the things that you're doing. Um, and I know you mentioned there are some awards that you are aspiring to. But when you think about and it doesn't even have to be in a professional standpoint. But when you think about as of today, right, 220, mm -hmm. 2022, what do you feel like the mark that you've had on black history has been? Um, 
Hmm, that's a great question. I want to say just existing and kind of define the statistics that said I shouldn't be here at a certain age or I I'm a uh I have two degrees. This the stats that's, that are against me in, in getting that the stats that um the low number of people, the low number of black people in advertising. I feel like just being a rep be, be kind of defeating some of those stats and then also just rep being a representative because even right now um somebody's gonna see this and they're like oh i can do this like this this is doable like i don't i don't feel like i'm saying anything groundbreaking or earth shattering but somebody else is gonna take this and it's gonna mean something and it's gonna like help them so just kind of um being a representative i think just like kind of existing and living my life and making my parents and my family and friends like proud like that's the impact i've had just like literally just existing and like doing living my life the way i'm living because you know you have no clue who's watching you never never know who's watching like even i'm sure it's probably someone like is that a tattoo on his neck and it's like yeah. yes yeah, a tattoo it on my neck and i work <laughs> in a corporate setting and i'm able to be myself just stuff like that like i mean i remember how i even got into advertising it wasn't a black person but um someone came to our class one day and like they literally um had on uh, a backwards hat a kind of a dirty kind of torn up t-shirt some cargo shorts and some flip-flops and he said he worked in advertising i can't remember if he was an art director or a copywriter i wish i could but um he mentioned he worked in advertising and then he said he wore he dressed like this to work every day and i was like you get to wear like just like that and at the time i was going to interviews having to wear suits and I don't know if something bad happened to me as a kid, but I hate suits. I hate dressing up. And so once he told me he get, was able to wear that to work every day, I was like, sign me up. Literally went to my counselor that day, changed my major. <laughs> but like his representation of being able to kind of be comfortable is what inspired me. So like me just being black, being myself and working like in a really cool and, and good industry it's like is 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 more than enough just to kind of like help people and show people that it, it can be done and they can be themselves yeah and you know what i think it's about being authentic you know and you know better than i do mm -hmm. in regards to words it is it, you know bigger words or more words doesn't necessarily mean it's going to pull the heartstrings of somebody and to your point it's around mm -hmm. telling their story so if i can see myself in you or like and it's not even to your point of comparison it may be all the reasons i'm making in my mind why i can't and you debunk all of that in one minute in one minute with to your point just existing and showing up mm -hmm. it's inspirational yep. it's inspirational because it doesn't have to sound a certain way it doesn't have to look a certain way and you know sometimes a lot of times people are underestimated because of that right so i totally agree and inspiration doesn't stop like a, a five-year-old looks up to his 10-year-old brother like yeah. uh, and so forth like i look up to the people older than me and people people younger than me too doing amazing things so inspiration doesn't stop and and it's like to your point it's literally just that authenticity of like people being themselves and you literally you have no clue who's watching somebody's always watching yeah so what are you most proud of so far in your career hmm uh that's a good question uh, my favorite piece of work or what I'm most proud of? Let's do both. Favorite piece of work and what you're most proud okay. of. Because you know I'm not an artist, so my I don't want to. I don't want to limp. You know, <laughs> I'm an artist and I'm sensitive. I just hear everybody <laughs> doing the background. I don't want look. I want to put some respect on it. So yeah, let's do both. Um, let's see. Um, I would say I did a commercial for NBC Sports um probably 2014 and it was basically uh it was for their they have an app i forget the name uh i forget the name of the app now but basically it was uh you were able to watch um sunday night football or whatever sports on your tablet so you could you didn't have to just be stuck on your tv now you could be mobile you could watch your phone watching your tablet and um it was a commercial uh i made sure that it was two it was a black family so and there's no words in it uh essentially it's sunday night football and we know sunday night football ends very very late and so um uh mom comes out of the kitchen and she kind of claps her hand like, hey it's time for you to go to bed 
the little boy's kind of like he's watching TV with his dad. He gets real, real sad and upset. You see him kind of go up the stairs <clears throat> and go to bed. And then the dad's kind of like sad. He's like, my football buddy's like gone. So he's just kind of watching TV sad. And then you cut to the next scene. Um, the mom kind of hears a TV going off in the son's room. And so she kind of saunt, walks down. And it's like, I told this boy to go to bed, <laughs> opens the door, and she sees the dad and the son underneath the covers watching the game together on the tablet. And she just kind of like, I'll let him live. Yeah. And then just kind of that one, just because like that one, it 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 got the message a point of what the, the client wants to deliver, which was you could watch football anywhere, but it just it wove in um and that's actually our good friend. That's Crystal's favorite commercial of mine, too. Oh, okay, uh, okay. It wove in, yeah. It wove in just a point of, like, so often we, like, me growing up, I never saw black families in mm -hmm. commercials and stuff like that. And if they were, it was just kind of, like, the one parent. Like, I want to, like, show, like, a two-parent, like, household, um, a, a family experience. So that was probably my favorite one just because I was able to kind of connect it to people that look like me and then deliver on what the client wanted. And then maybe uh proudest accomplishment maybe was something I did on my own, not even like advertising center, but I started like a magazine. Um, and it's no longer in existence. And a part of me would used to get upset because like, oh man, it failed, but it really didn't fail. Like yeah. it ran its course, but I was able to kind of sign a deal with Complex uh, magazine. Um uh, did a bunch of trips with Nike and 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 was able to cover football in the way I wanted to cover it. Uh, so that was probably my pride. It's like I started a company and it, it 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 was successful for about four to six years. So that that was probably that's probably one of my biggest um, accomplishments. I want to share something. Hold on, I gotta unplug. Hopefully, I don't lose lighting. So if it gets dark, hold on. Okay. Okay. So you had this in your link. And I'm super excited. You didn't say you were an author. Maybe oh, it's not your top. Actually, yeah, that one, that one, that one too. That actually, <laughs> actually, let me take that back. That's number one. That, is that, it? that actually is number one. That is number one just for the sense of like, I lost a mother um, mm -hmm. when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was maybe the weird thing about that. I, I wrote that. I started writing it in January, June of 2018. And I didn't finish it until June, June of a year later. And I don't know why I procrastinated or waited so long to just finish it. But like, I was just kind of struggling with my purpose and what I'm, I'm here to do. And I was just like, if I can't, if I don't do anything, I want to be able to kind of help kids who've lost a parent mm -hmm. and in some way, shape or form, be able to just help them get through it and yeah. however I can help. And God giving me a gift to kind of write. And so that actually, that actually is my um, biggest accomplishment. That actually, and when I wrote it, I, 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 I can get hard on myself. I'm like, this does not have to be a bestseller. If it's not a bestseller, that's totally fine. It's your first book. No one ever has a bestseller in their first book. But if you just do it, so that one, because I, I, I procrastinated for a very, very long time. So that that's probably me getting over the fear of, of doing it, the procrastination. Um, having to go find an illustrator in India to kind of help me with it and making it and just putting it out there um, is probably, that's probably my biggest accomplishment. That actually is my biggest accomplishment. Awesome. Yeah, so thank I you mean, for showing me that. I, I, well, you, I wanted that. to, I wanted that to surprise you because I, I'm looking at you. You're you. You always doing so many amazing things. As you know, we've, we've worked together for those that don't, um, Richard has been a part of like, as I've been an adjunct, he's always given back, been an inspiration for the students has even like probably took some of my work and helping great projects, giving me insight mm -hmm. in marketing. So you know that. And so I always know you're always working on something, even though you don't always share that because those that have listened know he's, you can see he's an extremely humble person and kind of, you know, it's like, Hey, it's just is what it is. And I was going back like, okay, let me make sure I get caught up right before, <laughs> before we do this. And I saw this book and I was like, Oh, please let it get here in time. Because, you know, I like to support as well. And I saw this and I was like, Thank this you so is much. so super sweet. So I was excited to Thank see this. So I want to, I, I want to, uh, yeah, I want to do that. So now that I hear the background, Thank I have to you. think about who I'm a gifted to because that's so special. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just, it, it, that, that moment obviously changed my entire life. And I was just like, how can I help people that um, are being faced with that? Like, I, mm -hmm. I literally don't 
I look at, I see my, I see little six year olds and I was like, how in the world did, did I, you navigate? Like, yeah. Did, yeah. I literally, that's was like, so yeah, that's that. Thank you for showing me that. I really, I really appreciate that. That, awesome. that actually made my day. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your work. It's funny how when you put something out, it keeps giving to your point of inspiration doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. So for you being yeah. that for yourself today. So thank you. All right. Well, this has been um, our, you know, everyday black man. I appreciate you being an amazing example um, and just overall good person. So I appreciate you and thank you. Um, and I'll turn it over to you to wrap us up. What would you like to, to end with? Um, oh, OK. Uh, stay positive. It's, if, if, if anything, just stay grateful and stay positive because this world can get you down and um but you can you can control it if mm -hmm. you just kind of stay positive stay grateful and just work hard and, and do what you want to do like in terms of your goals like nobody it's not going to be easy it's not supposed to be easy but like it feels so good once you finally like get through everything and you you say you're going to do something and you finally do it kind of to that book like it literally took me that book's not that i should have been able to i should have wrote that in honestly the the plane ride the two hour plane ride is on that i started it so and i'm happy that i got that out so yeah just kind of set goals small ones and big ones like small ones big ones like you can do i don't want to say anything but whatever you kind of put your mind to and you really really work hard for it's it, it can you can have it it can get you can get there and get really if not get really really close to it and probably get something better than what you even expected so just kind of be staying positive and being grateful because uh, we don't have so much time here. So it's most, most of it. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you have not uh, check out our YouTube page, we're going to drop it below, subscribe. And then um, I can't wait for everybody to definitely continue to watch all the amazing things you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you.